Well, welcome everybody to Cookie County and Southeastern Arizona Service and the Sierra Vista Area Chamber of Commerce. We appreciate all of you coming here today. I know it was short notice, but you're here because we all have the same passion, and that is for the issues that we're encountering on our border and the economic impact that those issues will have on our border and already having on our border. And so Congressman Siscomani is here with us today to talk about what they're doing in the legislature to help that out and to learn more from all of us and to learn about the impacts that we are seeing in our communities on the border. So thank you again for being here. Absolutely. Thank, thanks for having Melanie. And I want to echo uh, her words, uh, Melanie's words of saying thank you for coming here on such short notice. It's, you know, you think you, you can control your schedule once you're in office, and actually it's quite the opposite of that, uh, especially when you're dealing with Washington and, and as many times as we've been kept up there and all the work that we need to do. Quite frankly, I think there's still work to be done, and, and I'm not sure that uh, coming home and dismissing before Christmas was the right move given all that we still have to do, especially in this area. Now, we know for a fact that the House is taking care of what we need to take care of. We have passed the HR2. We've also dealt with the appropriations uh, bill on Homeland Security and also the aid for Israel. Uh, so the Senate is now is working on that and I had a meeting with Senator Sinema be, right before uh, flying back and maybe middle of the week I would say and she was working overtime on this um, convening some senators and, and members of Congress. I'm part of a caucus called the Problem Solvers Caucus. So there were four Democrats and four Republicans in that room talking about this. That same morning we have been there discussing this as well. And that's why I've been saying uh, more and more recently that this is really an issue that both sides are seeing for what it is, uh, a true crisis. Now, uh, we've been seeing it from the very beginning, and I know that all of you around this table have been seeing it from the very beginning. So it was important for me that the first week back here in the district for me to come back here to Cochise County, specifically Sierra Vista, and gather all those that are in the front lines. Just in the short period of time when I walked in, I heard stories from uh, mayors, what, what you're all dealing with, and you're in the front lines. Talking to, of course, the sheriff who's an old friend. We've been working together on these issues since my time with the state when I worked with the Ducey administration. And not to mention John Ladd, of course. Many of you also around the table serve on advisory councils for me, from veterans to uh, to an advisory council, a citizen's advisory council. These, all these things are very important to me because I want to continue to hear from you and make sure that my actions and my solutions that I'm proposing are in line with what's really needed. I have an idea of what that is, but no better way to find out through all of you. I also want to thank the press and the media for covering this. I think it's important. I think it's important that, that people know what's happening and what's going on and the solutions that we're looking for. I want to also, also always take the time to introduce my team. Um, we have Fiona here, the young, who you know, she's here full time with, with uh, Coaches County and she's your main point of contact a lot of times. We have CJ who uh, keeps coming back from different offices. We just <laughs> recycle CJ over and over again. He knows his stuff. He's been a great advocate for this area. And, and someone that you may not know as well as CJ and Fiona uh, is Caroline Bender. Caroline is my legislative director from Washington, D.C. And she flew in for this meeting. It's that important to me, to make sure that my legislative director is here <clears throat> listening to what's going on on the ground, the solutions that you're offering. This is a serious issue. And by talking with the sheriff, there's no, no end in sight. Every week it seems like that a new record gets broken for the wrong reasons. And that's completely unacceptable. And whenever the administration does get involved, whenever they do get engaged, whenever they do take some action is to close ports of entry and the first one to well one of the first ones to go but at least in Arizona the first one to go is Lukeville port of entry no heads up on this maybe a, a day or so and we they don't go, go on and close it and I call a meeting immediately to meet with Secretary Mallorca's about this and let him know what how detrimental this would be he didn't have time for me so his chief of staff met with me and we had an in-depth conversation. I think you've been in that boat when they don't have a lot of time for those that are going to let them know things that they may not want to like to hear. But I do appreciate the office meeting with me. I do appreciate the chief of staff meeting with me. And I was very direct on the impact that this will have in our region. 
And Lukeville's not in my district. It's not close to us here. But one of the things that I told them, I said, I want you to measure the whatever you think this is getting better, what success are you reaching with this? Because from what I'm seeing is that the illegal traffic continues to come. Meanwhile, the legal traffic, the tourism, the trade, the binational uh, citizens that, that have homes on both sides, the medical tourism, it has all stopped. And the illegal traffic continues to come. And he explained areas that he, they had seen a decrease, and I, and I said, I'm, I'm going to stop you right there. I really hope that you don't see this as a successful model that you want to duplicate in other areas then. Because it's not going to work. And it's not working. No, 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 of course not. Next morning, they, they closed the pedestrian port in San Isidro over in California. They just announced, of course, Eagle Pass. That you just saw the latest one. I get messages from my friends in Nogales saying, is Nogales next? I haven't heard anything on that. But I continue to press on it. And one of the solutions is not just a complaining session. One of the solutions that I offered right off the get-go was to deploy the National Guard. Now, I worked for the state before, as I said. So I know that when the federal government deploys the National Guard, they act with the National Guard. They have, they're responsible for, for the, the financial burden of that. And that's the way it should be because this is a federal problem, a failure from the federal government, specifically of the Biden administration. And I was obviously ignored on that. And even elected officials in Arizona said it was a bad idea and that they would not do that. Glad to see that Governor Hobbs signed the executive order to activate the National Guard not too long ago. That is the right move. Although late and I think it should have done, been done earlier, it is the right move. So now you even have Democrat governors taking action and speaking out in desperation against what the Biden White House is doing on this. And all of you end up paying the price directly for it. And that's why we have the people that we have around the table, from law enforcement to mayors to um, chiefs to uh, ranchers to business community. This, this is uh, who, we have, who we have around the table. And not all coaches. We have Bruce here, uh, Bracker from, from Santa Cruz County. Because this is something that impacts the entire state. And we have to continue to fight on this. I will not give up on this. This is not something that we just, well, I've done what I can. We've introduced HR2, which deals with a lot with the root cause of the problem. You all know this, I'm the Appropriations Committee. And part of that committee is funding. I mean, that the, the nature of that committee is funding. And, and one of the bills is the border. So when we talk about money for the border, that you'll hear a lot about, resources for the border, I'll always be in favor of that. But those resources cannot come without true policy changes. Because you guys know this, we can add all the money that we can on this, but if people don't start being returned home after an expedited asylum process, then it's all for nothing. And people will continue to be welcomed in with very little uh, uh, processing and then just sent all around the country. To cities like New York, like Chicago, cities that consider themselves sanctuary cities, and now those mayors are reconsider, reconsidering what that means in practicality. And I talk about Mayor McCaw often, letting them know that this is not a partisan issue. Maybe it is in Washington. I'm pretty sure it is in Washington. Not here. That, that's one of the most interesting things about this job, that, that when we say we, we travel within two different worlds, it's absolutely true. It's all partisanship. It, it's, it's trying to one-up each other. It's a dysfunction of the system in Washington, only to come home and to see Democrats and Republicans around the table concerned about the same issues. So if there's a picture that I would like the press to t walk away with today, it's that picture, that we are united, regardless of the party, on the issues that matter to us. And securing a border is an issue that matters to our community. And I want to remind everyone, because I have, we have friends here that are, uh, Mayor Hewish, of course, from Douglas. Again, not technically in the district, but very much in Cochise County. And through that port flows a lot of trade and commerce into not only the state, obviously CD6, but the entire country. And remember the example that I always give. I see the border in three different buckets. You have immigration. Immigration, which is people coming here to work. You have uh, people that want to come here to pursue uh, a better life, 
people who want to come here and pursue the American dream, maybe a green card, maybe work temporarily, maybe study, that's immigration. Then you have trade and commerce. For Arizona, Mexico is our number one trading partner, times four, over $17 billion of two-way trade. Right now during this season, I bet you we go to your mall here and we're gonna see a lot of license plates from Mexico. We want those shoppers, we want those people staying at our hotels. And then we have another bucket, which is security. The really bad actors, the ones that are working on hurting our country, hurting those migrants. How do I know that and why do I say that? The New York Times broke a story of 85,000 minors <coughs> that disappear within the system. So you can't tell me that this is not a humanitarian problem too. Did you see the minor, the 16 year old, that died in a, in a, working at a plant? And he got that job as a 32 year old identity? That's human trafficking right there. They're trying to track down where he came from, meaning through this wave or not. But when we have over 10 million people in the last two and a half years crossing this way, it's hard to argue that there's not a lot of people in there that are being trafficked and suffering from this. Not to mention what we're going through here. You know this, I'm an immigrant. I want this system to work. It should work. And we should improve it. But every time that we continue to allow these waves of people that come in illegally, it actually hurts those that are waiting, that have been waiting, and that will continue to now wait longer because they turn in their application like they were asked to do. So there is no winning in this, except the cartels. They are the ones that are winning in this. And I am part of a task force as well that was created within Congress, and I was appointed to that called the, uh, the Tackling the Mexican Cartels Task Force. So we get to look into the activities of the cartels and how they profit from this business. And the human trafficking business is taking over the drug trafficking business, while fentanyl continues to be on the rise. So I tell you all this, so is it all, all bad news? I mean, it, it looks sure, the evidence sure points that it's not getting better. But I'm there working on this, fighting on this, and at every level, so are you. And that's why this round table is important. They kept us up there for longer than we needed to be through all of these different things that were happening. We couldn't come back to the district for a while. It's frustrating. But I've kept in touch with many of you through Zoom meetings or phone calls, and I appreciate your feedback. But this meeting right here is important to me. I wanted to let you know just real quick what I've been doing, where my mind is, is on this, and to, and, and to let you know that what worries me the most is that there is no end in sight on the way that this administration has been handling this issue. Not once have we felt that things are getting better. At least I haven't felt that way. So with that, I would love to hear from each of you, all of you, and you tell me what it is that you're going through, what I need to know to make sure that we take this information home with my team legislatively through resources. What are the right policies that we need to implement on this? I have an idea, but I want to know from the boots on the ground what are the best ways to handle it. So 